Hey everybody, my name is James Shepard and today I'm going to show you how much you can make selling cash discounting. And so a couple reasons that I want to do this. First of all, I think that there is a big opportunity that there are still some ISOs and processors I'm talking to that just don't really understand. Um, also, I wanted to make it clear that um, if you're looking for help from a consulting perspective, looking to implement cash discounting, I've helped several processors and ISOs get this set up. So I'd be glad to help you with that. Just shoot me an email, james at ccsalespro.com. Um, or if you're looking for a processor because I have helped several of them uh, set up cash discounting. I'm glad to make a uh, reference or referral and uh, send you over to a processor that's doing this the right way. So we're just going to make a real quick projection here. So we're going to make this month one. This is going to equal that month plus one. And then I'm just going to basically drag this over and we're going to create 36 months. Okay. So we now have 36 month projection here. All right, and then we're going to go right here and we're just going to put number of sales each month, right? So let's say you're making, uh, let's see, I'm going to make one extra column here. So we'll put the number of sales we're going to make a month. So let's say you're making 10 sales a month. So this is going to equal this. And we're going to go like this. And this way we can very easily um, just change that one number and we can see the impact of potentially making more sales. So now you can see if we change this to like 12, you know, it'll change them all the way over. So that's our number of sales. Um, then we're going to do our lease amount. So I'm gonna assume that you're selling leases on the terminals, which honestly, if you're not doing that on cash discounting, um, it's kind of crazy because the terminals do cost more money if you want to do it the right way. Uh, usually you're using a deja vu or a PAX terminal. So the terminals are a little bit more expensive. Um, and plus, in this case, you're saving the merchant hundreds of dollars a month, maybe even thousands. So it makes a lot of sense to do a lease and you know charge them a little bit of money. So here we're going to have, this is going to be our lease amount uh, monthly. So let's say we're doing a $49 lease and I'm going to assume that we're doing a uh, 48 month lease. So this is saying, uh, let's go back to our home screen here. Uh, this is saying it's $49. And then we're gonna say the lease term. And let's say that the lease term is 48 months. So then we're gonna say the funding amount. Now, uh, the funding amount is just, its it really does vary a lot based on the credit worthiness of the um, uh, the credit worthiness of the uh, the business owner, but a rough estimate I found is uh, we can just take this times this, so like the total amount that they're going to pay, which is that. So that's the total amount that the business owner is going to pay, and then we can actually just multiply that by 0.65, and as a general rule, that's roughly what's going to get paid out um, on on that particular lease. And so we have the funding amount. Um, then we have the terminal cost. So let's say we're buying, uh, I don't know, $350 terminal. Okay. And so we're gonna basically just extrapolate these numbers out over all of this here, and then we're gonna put in here, this is gonna be our lease income. And I'm gonna make this column bold. All right, and so let's start by going right here, and we're gonna say equals 10 sales times this. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of Excel magic here so that we can copy and paste this formula over as well. Okay, so we're gonna bring that all the way over to our 36 month time frame here. <clears throat> Make these columns a little bit bigger. Okay, then our terminal cost is going to equal this number of sales times terminals. So we have to buy more terminals and now I can copy that over. So basically every month, if you're doing 10 deals a month, you're going to get $15,000 a month in lease funding money. And there's gonna be a cost per, you know, for these terminals you're buying of 3,500. Um, and so then we can see our lease income here, uh, which we can go right here, is going to equal, I really don't need to use a sum there, but it's just an old habit I have, of that minus that. Okay, and so your average lease is gonna pay out that much money. And so now I can copy this over. And so you can see that if you're making 10 sales a month with a 
$49 per month lease at 48 months, you're going to make $11,788 a month. And this is a pretty big deal when I'm talking to a lot of reps who are currently you know, making, they're doing 10 deals a month and they're making a couple thousand, maybe 3,000 a month in upfront money. Um, this is this is almost 12,000 a month in upfront money. So the difference is pretty extreme. Then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do our um, margin, right? So let's do margin and let's say that the margin, now again, you gotta look at the margin on these accounts. So let's say that we have the av an average account that's doing, um, 12,000 in volume, okay? So on most of these, uh, you know, on most of these uh, cash discounting deals, there's usually at least 100 basis points of markup on these, um, just because most people are doing them because you're trying to give yourself a little cushion to make sure you're you're okay. Um, so again, a lot of this just depends on how much margin you want to put in, the, put in there, but, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could look at this. So if you do 12,000 times, um, you know, basically the 1%, which is 100 basis points, that's $120, right? And so um, the way I'm gonna do this here is, I'm gonna put in a, a number of basis points here, which is gonna be 100. So I'm gonna put um, basis points of markup, like that. And then we're gonna do margin. And this margin is gonna be based on $12,000 in, uh, $12, in uh, revenue. So it's gonna be this, Let's see. So we're going to go 12,000 times this divided by, oops, divided by 10,000. So that'll convert it into the percentage that we need, I think. Yeah. So it's 120 bucks. And so there's that. Okay, so now what I can do here when we have our margin um, is now we can look at our total margin here and we can go equals you know, well, let's see, we're gonna to have to put our total accounts in here, aren't we? So let's put a new column up here and put total accounts. Okay, and so we're gonna go, we're gonna actually just delay it two full months just because it's easier that way. Because as you know, residual takes a little while to catch up, right? So then we're gonna say equals this plus this. And then Gonna go out a little bit more here. All right. Now, one of the other things too, of course, you'd have to look at attrition. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a number over here, um, and this is really just a very rough number. It's it's actually not um, super accurate here. There's a lot of different ways you could do this mathematically that would actually be more accurate. But I'm gonna say that we're gonna lose 15% of our accounts per year. So starting in this uh, fourth month, I'm gonna do basically the same formula here. But after I do that, I'm gonna make this a sum here so I can split it up a little bit better. So we're gonna total them up, but then we're gonna subtract um, the total number uh, times this divided by 12. So this is not exactly accurate, but it's what it does is it basically just takes away, uh, you know, approximately 15% attrition a year. It's not exactly right uh, mathematically, but it's just easier to show you this uh, this way. So, um, so let's get that all the way down here to just an even number to count. So we can just see that, and I'm gonna take that all the way over. Forgot to put my little uh, dollar signs here lock it into that number. So now we can take this all the way over. And there we go. All right, so that's our total number of accounts at any given month. So now we can go over to right here and we can see what our gross margin would be. We're gonna say equals this number here times our margin. And so we can see what our total margin would be for all of our accounts. by month. Okay, then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna put our residuals. So let's say that our residuals, this is gonna be a percentage, let's say we're at, I don't know, 60% residual here. Um, let's see here. All right, so now we just take this times this number here. 
So again, I realize this is a very overly simplified model. If I was actually consulting with a processor or ISO, we would do a much more in-depth study of, you know, what's your attrition, what's your split, what's your schedule A cost, what other fees are you adding in, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But this gives you kind of a general idea. So um, now I'm gonna make this bold as well. So you can see your upfront income from the leases, then your residuals. Then down here, we're gonna put total income. So this is your monthly income for doing cash discounting. We're gonna take the lease income plus the residuals like this. Take it all the way over. Okay, and so you can see you start out at about 12,000 a month and then you go all the way up and you can see that in 36 months you are making $31,000 a month off of cash discounting. And this is one individual rep. So imagine a team of five reps. Imagine a team of 10, 20, 30 reps. This number right here, that's why everybody is doing cash discounting. And so if you're an individual rep with 15% attrition making 10 sales a month, 36 months from now you could be making $31,000 a month pretty conservatively. And the good news is right off the bat next month you would make $11,788. Um, it's funny actually yesterday I was getting, I picked up pizza at a local pizza shop and when I paid him he asked, you know, do you want to pay, are you paying with cash? Would you like to pay with cash or would you like to pay with card? And I said I want to pay with the card so I gave him my card and I saw his little cash discount sign on his register. So I asked him about that and he said, yeah, I implemented it about a year ago. I said, have you had any problems with it? He said, you know, he said, uh, initially we had maybe two people who brought it up and were a little bit, you know, upset about it. But uh, we explained to them that, you know, we have a cost of processing and they didn't realize that. And then they were fine. And he said, nobody's asked us about it since for a whole year. And I said, has your business gone down at all? He said, no, our business has gone up this year. So, um, you know, the truth is cash discounting, consumers don't really care. Everybody likes to say that they would care. But the truth is when they're actually doing the transaction, they don't really care about the cash discount. So if you have any questions about this at all, I would love to talk with you. I always enjoy having conversations with sales reps and ISOs and executives in our industry. So just reach out to me. It's james at ccsalespro.com, james at ccsalespro.com. Hopefully this little video will help you to understand how much you can make selling cash discounting.